Hi there. In this episode, we're going to look at very basic flap programming. Uh, I hope you've already watched the uh, introduction to the multi-servo wings and we'll crack on with this one. So uh, we've got a model which is set up in basic properties as a two flaps, two aileron wing. And if we look in the function assignment, it's using P5, which is a slider on the right, as the flap control. I don't like a slider as flap. I like to have them fixed on a three position switch. So I shall go ahead and change that. There we go. There's my three position switch. Okie doke. Now, uh, I said this is very simple flap. All we'll do is get it to operate the flap. Uh, with a flap, you would have, uh, well, certainly a three position switch. Obviously, there's three points to be adjusted. You could go ahead and adjust the end travels individually for each servo in the model servo setup and go through and adjust the flap. How do you set its center point? Well, you could use sub trim and straight away you're into all sorts of problems because sub trim will shift the entire frame of the servo. So it'll shift the end points as well. But the end points will shift the sub trim because it affects the overall travel. And so trying to do your uh, f match your flap servos this way is just pig and awful. What you need to do is come through to fine tuning, function curve, flaps, go into it, change it to a three point curve, because that, that corresponds then with the three positions of the uh, switch. Come down here, press the button and we're in. And if I move the switch, you see the circle denoting where the control actually is. Oh, sorry, it was that one, it's at the middle. So it's gone down here, switch at middle, switch there. This circle is the point that's actually being changed by the programming dial. Um, so uh, before you actually switch your model on, I would suggest going into this and turning the travels down to a tiny amount. Take it to something like that. Take it close to zero, doesn't matter. Press the button, goes to the center point. Press the button, we're up at the other end point. Bring that close to zero. Now the reason for this is when you plug everything in on the model, the flaps aren't going to jump to one extreme, uh, which, you know, might be overdriving them, stressing the linkages, etc., especially in, in the up position. And so if I was to move the flap switch now, have a look at my flap servos, they barely move. So no chance of breaking anything. Right, now it's very simple. I put my flap in the flaps up position. Can you see the programming circle? Or sorry, not the programming circle, but the, the circle that corresponds to the position of the switch jumps to this one. I've put the switch to the up position, so that is going to adjust the up position of, of the flap. So if I press the programming button to bring actual programming around to there, lovely. Now I'll be adjusting that position. And I can go to my actual flaps and adjust it up or down or up to get the flap where it needs to be to sit perfectly at the up position. I'll put it there to signify flaps up. Gone way up high. I'll bring it back down a bit there. Next, I want to set the mid position of the flap, the takeoff position, which is not usually halfway between flaps up and landing flap. It might be only a quarter of the way or a third of the way. 
So I'll move my switch to that position. Uh, so that shows the switches there, but the programming point is still that one. So I press the rotary button again. Programming point now matches that flaps at mid position or the switches at mid position. I can adjust the value until I get the flap travel that I want for takeoff. Look over here. I'll move the switch to the landing position. See how the circle jumped down here? Now if I press the rotary dial, this circle will jump down to show it's the point I'm going to be programming. And I can look at my flaps and turn the dial until I've got the relevant amount of full landing flap. And there we go. And there's the curve that would result from it. So, as we can see, landing flap, take off flap, flaps up. Now, you're going to have tiny variations in the real flap travel on your model. They're not going to travel exactly the same due to tiny differences in the servos, in the linkages, in the positions of horns, etc. Um, normally at the sort of takeoff and uh, landing flap position, the, these fractions of a degree or a degree is not going to make any difference. Where it can make a difference is when the flaps are completely up because uh, they might be pushing against something and binding. So I would suggest that what you do is unplug uh, flap servo 2 and 3 and 4 if needs be, if they're there, and work this on flap servo 1, which is your most left flap servo, and then you can go to the model, servo setup, move along to flap 2, and you can then make tiny adjustments in this. If you select a value, you'll see that as I move the switch, select a value, move the switch. I'm not making the cursor jump up and down. It's going with the actual travel itself. So I put the flaps to the up position. This flap's binding a little bit. I can reduce its travel a smidge and just stop it binding. Okay.